Hello everyone. Today we wanted to bring you a basic ball python setup and care guide. There are a lot of ways that you can set up your ball python. Today we're going to be doing it in a tub. So that leads perfectly into our first part of building a setup for a ball python. Your enclosure. You have to choose tank or tub. Basically, find out what works for you. I believe I briefly got into why I prefer racks and tubs over tanks, but by no means is that saying that tanks don't work. Tanks work for a lot of people. I'll reiterate once more, tubs hold their humidity a little better and they block out more line of sight and more light on your ball python. So basically it makes the entire enclosure a hide. It creates a very safe space for the ball python. One things I can say about a tank is that they do provide a lot better viewing. You can build a much nicer looking setup you can have a lot of fun with it um not that you can't have fun with a tub but it looks a lot better but on the flip side tubs generally provide a little bit more security for your ball python but there is kind of a middle ground i have a arizona mountain king snake in a enclosure which is not a glass tank it's a pvc enclosure front opening completely enclosed on every single side except for the front and it provides for him quite well so this might be a really good middle ground once you've decided which enclosure you're going to go for for. It's just a simple matter of procuring it. Today I'm going to do my build on this tub. I use this tub as an isolation tub quite often if I think I might have a sick snake. When considering the size of your enclosure, ideally you want them to be able to stretch their bodies out across the entire tank or at the very least in an L shape. They should be able to just do that with their entire body. As a baby, you don't really need to consider that. And as an adult, they're gonna grow so big, it just kinda depends on what you're gonna keep them in. Obviously, if you're keeping the male and something even like this, a full grown adult male, most of them are gonna be fine in the size like this. If you are doing a tub, you're going to want to make sure you drill or burn holes into the side of it. I recommend getting one of these because they're cheap, not that drills aren't, but sometimes when drilling you can crack the plastic and that's no good, but it certainly will work. But you just plug this in, it gets nice and hot after a little bit of time and you just burn holes right in there. This is the exact one that did that. Kind of in this fashion, but that just allows some airflow and it doesn't make it so that it's completely damp and humid in there. They do need some humidity, but they're not jungle creatures by any mean. They are in an environment where they will have some humidity, but it's not completely humid. We'll get into that when we get to the substrate. If you are building in a tank, the setup will be essentially the same unless you choose a different heating element. And on that, that's the number one thing you want to get to. You need to decide how you're going to provide heat for your ball python. We recommend an under the tank heater, which would just slap on the bottom of this much like this heat pad here or this heat tape right here heat tapes a little different in that you usually have to set it up yourself or buy it set up either of these will work fine these are commercially available though I don't see heat tape except for online or at reptile shows typically though this will probably be more available to you from I believe pretty much every major pet store but this one here we just kind of slap on there like so this one doesn't stick quite as well as others, mostly because I've used it for years now. The basics of providing heat for your ball python are almost done. This is about the most dangerous setup currently that you can possibly do. The next step is the most important piece of hardware that you're going to have for the entire enclosure. And that would be a thermostat. This is a Bavarian Electronics. There's also some really nice ones out there from Spider. This is a very trusted brand right here, as is the Spider one. It doesn't have as many features as uh, some of its cousins, uh, but this will definitely get the job done reliably. However, these are close to 100 bucks or over 100 bucks. So when setting up just one snake, you can get away with something a little bit cheaper to the tune of 20 bucks off Amazon. If you look up reptile thermostat on Amazon, on. I believe this for like about $18.99 is going to be your first result. These work fine. With that being said, the others, like I just showed you, have an alarm system in them. That isn't a bad idea. The way this works, you plug the thermostat into the wall. You plug your heating element into the thermostat and voila, it's good to go, except you haven't put your probe in yet. So there's two ways you can go about this. You can either put the probe right here on the inside, which would be the most accurate reading for your bull python, but it could also knock this loose. I seen Emily from Snake Discovery do this same setup where she put silicone on there and that certainly worked, but it's going to be a lot harder to move your probe. If you want to put it in there, I would recommend that though, because they could bump this off. If they bump that off, suddenly this becomes the most dangerous thing in the world again. The benefits of putting it in there though, is that you're going to have a more accurate reading for where you want to control your temperature. 
So if I set this thing, right now it's set to 93. I could probably turn it down a little bit if I had it directly on where the snake will be. I could probably turn it down to closer to 90 because we want to try and get that to 90 degrees for the hot spot. Alternatively, and this is what I do, I put this on the bottom of it. And what this does is it ensures that there's no possible way that my snake can move this. And as long as it's on a flat surface, it's not likely to be disturbed. The downside of doing it this way though, is that I'm not trying to regulate the temperature on the bottom of the tank. I'm trying to regulate it right here, probably through about an inch of substrate. So I'm not getting as accurate of a reading. And that's why you wanna play around with it. This is an easy fix, honestly the temp gun. You're going to want to check that temperature just like this. Now, sometimes it'll be pretty hot. Like right now, this is already temping at 95 degrees and that's with me having set it at 93. And there's a two degree upswing on these. So keep that into mind. So immediately I haven't added my substrate yet, but I already know I'm going to want to adjust that probably down two degrees. So you want to get one of these for sure. The temperature thermometers that you stick on the side, they're measuring ambient temperature. So you could have one, but usually honestly with humidity, they end up breaking. So I recommend just getting one of these. So already temping right here, I'm already at about 93 and a half. And if you temp on your cold side, mostly because it's getting through to the cold table and I'm right next to a window here, I'm at 72 and 73 ish. So you can see I've already created a temperature gradient without doing anything else. Again, the most important step of all of this is this. You can easily hurt or kill your snake by not doing this. And you could honestly burn your house down uh, or burn a hole in, your carpet, not like I've ever done that, ever, because a stupid probe came loose. So don't be like that. Now, the way you would do this if you're doing an over the tank heater or you know a light setup would be that you would put your light source on top, which would be a basking heat lamp, and you should still get a thermostat, which you would, in this case, have to put it in the inside, but it could probably move around a little bit and be fine because it's going to be in the general area. Um, although it's not as dire of a situation to put the thermostat on there, you should always use a thermostat when you're using any heating element, period. In my bearded dragon enclosure, the temperature started getting so ridiculously hot, the light kept turning off and on by the thermostat. If I hadn't had that in there, it probably would have been into the 110s. I don't know how that happened. I actually switched to a different wattage of bulb during the summer and still do. So that's why I would still use a thermostat plugged into it. But basically the way that would work is you'd put your dome light on top with a properly wadded heat light lamp, probably 75 watts, maybe 100. You're still gonna want one of these because the important thing is that you're gonna wanna find out what the temperature is directly underneath of where the heat lamp is. After getting your thermostat and your heat under control, you're ready for your substrate. There's a good amount of choices you can pick for a substrate. I use some sort of cocoa husk. Right now I'm using Reptichip. I've been using that one for quite some time, but there's nothing wrong with the others. I've used them as well. You're gonna wanna put a thin layer of your substrate, usually about an inch. I recommend the Reptichip, but believe it or not, you can use paper towel. If you use paper towel, I'd recommend probably double sheeting it over top of it. The problem with that is that it doesn't look pretty. And each time your snake uses the bathroom, you're pretty much gonna have to take out your entire paper towel. Not that that's a huge task or anything like that, but it's a little bit more disturbing to the snake to have to move them, take out the paper towel, put it on everything. Especially if this is gonna be your permanent enclosure, you're gonna have to do that quite often. If you get something like Reptichip, they're gonna use the potty and you just have to take that little bit around there because it soaks up everything. It does work, in fact, I use paper towel when I'm isolating my snakes. But there's a lot of other choices. You can supplement it even with some forest moss, um, some sphagnum moss. If you're going to use a drier substrate though, which I don't usually recommend anything besides paper towel, you should still have some sort of humid hide. But in this example, which I do believe they make larger ones, top slides right off. You could put little sponges I think you could buy in there, but you could also just use sphagnum moss right there. And probably for the bottom layer as well. But you can just put this usually on the warmer side, at least close to it. That way the humidity will kind of increase with temperature and you don't have cold wetness. You don't want that, that's bad. They can get respiratory infections. So usually your more humidity driven side will be a little bit more towards the back. But with that being said, it's going to dry out sooner because of the heat as well. So just keep an eye on your humidity. It doesn't need to be too crazy. Some people overthink this, I think, but we'll get into the hides in just a moment. I just wanted to bring it up just for the humidity sake of it, since it kind of relates to substrate. There are a lot of other substrates that you can use, including cypress mulch. I don't recommend Aspen for a ball python, but I've seen it work 
as long as you provide the humidity. The trick to that, however, is that humidity and aspen don't get along. It molds pretty quickly when you get it wet. So if you use something dry like aspen, again, you're gonna need to have a humidity hide, probably a lot bigger, honestly. Probably something more like a Tupperware container that you cut a hole into that they can climb in and get their humidity, most likely on the hot side. For this video, I made a little bit of cocoa husks just so I could show you. I might recommend even a little bit more in certain cases, but this is gonna do perfectly fine for this. Now, ideally, when you first make your cocoa husk, it'll already be plenty wet and you don't really need to do anything with it. I'm not gonna make an entire breeder's block right now. I have no need for it. So in this case, yes, I use a little watering can. I don't have access to plumbing in the back room, which would be nice, but ideally what you want is a substrate that is somewhat wet on the bottom, but a little bit dry on the top. But this stuff really absorbs a lot of moisture. So you can get a little bit crazier than you might think. And this will suck all that moisture up. Quick side note on that, I recommend having this all prepared and done before you get your ball python. That way you can monitor it and make sure that there are no issues before your little one or big one arrives. But this is pretty good right now. You wanna get something that isn't soaping wet or dripping. But when I squeeze it, I can maybe get a couple drops out of it. This is a fairly good amount of substrate, all things considered, honestly, because we're going to have a bowl and some other stuff in there. But you just basically don't want to go overboard having it too deep. Because remember, your snake is going to want to get warm right here. Now, right now, if I temp this right here, especially having just put water on that, it is an abysmal 74 degrees. We need some time for this heat to get through the substrate as well. So again, that's another good reason why you should monitor this for a little bit before getting your bull python, because I might need to play around with my thermostat to get this to where I need it to get. Now your bull python might dig a little and do one of these and burrow and put them directly on the heating element. That is probably okay. That's why you wanna get a decent range so that even on this at its hottest, it's not in some crazy high temperatures. Your ideal temperature you're going for is 90 degrees. It's okay to be a little bit over that or even a little bit under that. Ambient temperature, usually you'll hear people say 80 degrees. Sometimes that's not achievable. It's a lot easier to do in a tub though because you don't have a screen top releasing all of the heat and letting in cold air. It's just going to warm up the entire thing. Generally, you want your substrate to be about an inch deep. Nothing too crazy. This is actually pretty good, especially considering that we're gonna have some water bowls in here and some hides. And on that, water bowls. You can go something small. I recommend something that they can get into, especially at a young age, at least part of their body. So we're going to use this one here today. And you can see it gives up a good amount of room. Even an adult would be able to drink fine out of this, but a baby is going to be able to completely submerse their whole body in there. So we'll get that in there just like so. Sometimes you can put it in the middle too, if you want it to get a little bit hotter, that way they can maybe get a little bit of humidity out of there. But if you've got this sort of stuff in here, you really don't need to worry about them needing humidity anymore. They might not even need to soak. Sometimes they still will. Some people will tell you that if they soak, that there's a health concern. I don't think so. Give them a glance over, cause it could be, but it's not the first place I go when I see my bull python soaking. Then we're gonna wanna add our hides. Let's just assume. Right here, we want the entire hot side to be covered there. Now, obviously we've got something a little bit smaller here. So if you're doing a small baby ball python, you can use one of these here. But then we put our cold hide in here as well, so it can hide in there. If you wanted to get the bigger hide as well, you'd have to play around with the space. This probably would need to go middle so that this could fit right here or here. However, you kind of want to set it up. But honestly, right here is the basics of having a bull python set up. If you want, you can add some cool little decor, some logs, leaves, some stuff for enrichment, but it's certainly not necessary. So all we have to do is add our snake. This little girl right here is one that we have available right now and is doing amazing. She is an inchy pastel spider clown. She could be super inchy, but I don't think that she is. I think one of her sisters might be though. So we just put her I'm in there. They usually take a little bit of time to get used to new surroundings and stuff like that. She'll actually be available on our morph market pretty shortly. There she goes. No one in there. Honestly, she could be in something even smaller, but with enough hides and such, she'll be, she would do fine in something like this, but she's all ready to be set up and go. And there you have it. Same thing goes with the tank. You'd be done. 
right now, except that obviously when you're setting up where you want your hides to go, you're going to be a little bit more cautious about that because the heating element will go down here. They're not going to get as much heat when they're in their hides, so they're going to have to choose to come out for heat. So you'd probably want to have a spot where it's like half and half because it'll get hot in there, but not as hot as it should be because of that. They're going to have to come out for their heat probably in most cases. When they get older, they're going to get a lot bigger. So consider that, especially when you're considering these here these are important because they lock down now i've kept adults in here but i kept them monitored and supervised but think about this as they get older you need to get something that possibly is a little more secure on the sides or put some maybe bricks down honestly on these things to keep them down snakes are very powerful they're just a big muscle so consider that as well after you get them all set up and put in there try to leave them alone for a week just Checking on them from afar, making sure that they have water. Obviously, if you put a lot in there like I did, you should be fine. Just leave them be. They need some time to acclimate. And again, I know that's a real hard thing to say because I've been there. I know exactly how that feels, but think about it from their perspective. They're being moved around a lot. They're stressed out. They don't know what's going on. They're just in a new environment now. And now they've got a giant looming over them. These hides are incredibly important for that too, because this gives her, her security and her ability to just feel safe and away from everything. They love this. That's just part of getting a snake is that they are going to hide all the time. They will be out and about. And of course, there you go. See, you can see them whenever you'd like, but just leave them alone for a while. Don't freak out if they don't eat for a little while. It's totally normal. They're nervous. They don't understand things. I wouldn't even offer them for at least a week, maybe two. If they don't eat for quite some time, don't freak out. Try a different prey. Talk to the breeder that you bought them from. Just make sure that you're offering them the appropriate food. They were eating, but just make sure they get to you know that they're eating regularly before you start to change things up on them as well. If you're concerned about if your snake has a respiratory infection or is having trouble eating, you can check out our video that we did on respiratory infections right here and on assist feedings right here.